Hi again, Dr. Paul here. Hey, do you have kids who are kind of picky eaters? Let's take that on today. In some of the other videos that we've worked on here in the parenting playlist, the positive parenting playlist, that's a resource for all of us as parents, okay? So spend some time there. But in some of those videos, we've talked about how we share control with our kids. Kids don't get to control very much because they're not mature enough to do that. So what they can control, they will control, and they will probably do it very enthusiastically, if I can use that word. Eating is one of the things that your kids control. Now, you control elements of the dining experience with your children, but they get to control what they eat, what they actually put in their mouth and swallow. So this is an area that the kids control. Now, with that in mind, let's talk for just a moment about problem ownership. Whoever is most upset by or focused on some particular thing owns the problem. Let me repeat that. Whoever is most upset by or focused on whatever is the issue owns the problem. Now, ask yourself, is my child concerned about or focused on the quality of food, the nutritional value of the food that they're consuming? No, they're not worried about it. Therefore, it's not their problem, is it? I know that's going to sting a little bit because it's going to come back to us as parents. Who owns this problem? Mom, it's your problem. Dad, if it's bugging you, own it. You own the problem as a parent. There's a lot of reasons why you're concerned about it and your kid's not. But here's the kicker. You're concerned about something they control. That presents a possible power struggle. I've got three rules for power struggles. Here they are. Rule number one, avoid them. Don't get into this fight if you don't have to. Before you march up that hill, you got to decide, am I willing to die on this hill? Avoid them. Rule number two, if you can't avoid them, win them. I'd tell your kids this too, because I don't think they should be getting into power struggles that they can't win. If you can't avoid a power struggle, make sure that you can win it. Now, number three, Third rule for power struggles. You pick the issues. Kids are really good at this. They don't get into power struggles with you about things they don't control. Notice that. And maybe we can learn something from our brilliant kids who have already figured out the three rules of power struggles. Avoid them. If you can't avoid them, win them. And you pick the issues. That's how you're going to win them. So going back to a basic concept of what we control and what we don't, you don't control what your kids eat. However, you do control what you provide to them to eat. Do you see how we can get a little bit of leverage off of that? The types of food that are available. Look, if your kid is constantly eating something that you don't approve of, where are they getting this stuff? I know that's going to sting a little bit too as you wheel your grocery cart to the front with all of the ding-dongs and Twinkies in there. And I'm overemphasizing this because you control what you provide. And if it's not available to them, they don't have access, do they? They don't have that kind of control over their life yet. So I know this is sounding very um, basic and maybe even a little harsh, but let's acknowledge where it comes from and you get to control what you provide. Not only that, you get to control when you provide it. 
So maybe what they're eating is okay, but you want them to eat their dinner instead of, you know, bypassing the meal because they've got all these snacks during the day. Wait a minute, do the math. You get to choose and control what you provide and when you provide it. So do you have to provide all of these snacks during the day? No, you don't. And oftentimes what I've seen with picky eaters is that they're not hungry when lunchtime comes around. Why? Because they've been eating stuff all morning. What if they were a little more hungry at lunch? Do you think they'd be a little less picky about what you choose to provide? And honestly, you are a benevolent, loving parent, and you're going to provide them with all kinds of great food that has high nutritional value, or at least some approximation of that, right? So what if they're more hungry when you provide this meal to them? Are they more likely to eat it, to be a less picky eater. Now, along those same lines, you get to control access. We've talked about that a little bit with the snacks, but do they have access to those snacks that they might prefer over the meal? Or is that something that you can control as well? How, when, what criteria need to be met in order for them to access that? So maybe you want to make it available to them and it's contingent on whatever it is you decide they need to do to qualify for the access. Classic example is you may have this dessert when you've finished your broccoli, right? And I would phrase it in a positive way too. It's not, well, if you don't eat your broccoli, you don't get to have dessert. Listen to all those negatives in there. That's not fun. You can have some dessert when you've finished your broccoli. See, that's all positive. What you're doing is controlling the terms under which they get to have access to the food that they might prefer. Now, probably the most important part of this whole thing is how you as a parent get to control your own mood and the tone of this interaction in the first place. I think all too often we get into that desperate, oh my gosh, I have to change something about this mode. And our kids pick up on that. It's, it's like they're little emotional mirrors. And if we're having a tough day, they're bouncing off the walls, right? So you want to approach this whole topic of picky eating from a very solid, smooth, calm, emotional tone so that it's all business for you. There's no drama, there's no desperation, there's no demand that they change their behavior. It's simply business. And you're smiling. Mom's smiling, kids are thinking. That's a good rule of thumb. You get yourself into a nice, calm, emotional state. Well, how are you gonna do that? I know, that's probably another video, but keep watching so that we can get some collaboration going. If you guys have some questions about this topic or if you've got some other things you've tried that have worked well with the picky eaters, let's get a conversation going down in the discussion or in the comments below and I'm going to interact with you there too. So let's give that a try. I got to tell you, I am personally honored to be on your positive parenting team. Thanks for being here with me today. I'll see you tomorrow.